Hi guys, how you going? It's a brisk uh, uh, Saturday morning, it's about five degrees in Melbourne. So this weekend, what I'm planning to do is make a potting bench for the wife. Her birthday's coming up next week. So I had to sort of leave it to the last minute so she wouldn't see it. <laughs> and I was told her not to come out the bank today. So with that, we're gonna be using all recycled timber. So these are all pallets I've collected over the last probably month. So I've been pulling these apart. I've got some longer pieces over there which I just got during the week. I don't need to pull those apart today. And then basically we'll stuff up this plugging bench. So I've been researching this for a little while. So hopefully it ticks all the boxes for it. It'll be mobile. Um, we haven't quite set up the area where she does a lot of her potting around. So the fact that it's mobile is good. And I don't think it'll be just useful for potting. I think it could be used for multiple things. So you'll see the design come together. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. All right, so let's get started. Tools of the Pullet Pallion Trade, vice grips, crowbar, hammer, grinder, and that should come with the image. All right, guys, so all finished, <laughs> all denailed, and again, there's a lot of timber there, but yeah, I'm not using all that today. <laughs> So basically we'll sort through all the bits now, work out what we need, and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right guys, so we've worked out from all that timber now what I need. So we've got side rails here, we've got top here, we've got top sides, we've got the bottom shelf, we've got some, um, just across the, across the ports. We've got legs, and that's pretty much everything. Now the only other couple of things I'm gonna need for this build is a couple of plastic tubs. And you'll see what they're gonna be used for soon. And some sliding rails. So these particular ones are rated to 45 kilos each, which is more than enough. Um, and just some wheels, because I want this stand mobile. So we've got two fixed, um, sorry, two without locks, and then two with locks. So we can lock them in place. Um, and that's pretty much it. Obviously some screws and nails. Um, if you want, you can recycle even the nails from the pellets, but um, I don't need to, so. Cool. And one last thing. And I'm a bit uh, upset about it is I couldn't find two long enough pieces for the side rail. So I have to go buy a piece of timber. So at the end of the day, again, all of this is all recycled, cost nothing. All we had to fork out for was this bit of pine, some plastic tubs and some wheels, and the side rail. Um, so I got that pretty cheaply, so I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so let's get the frame done now. Let's start with that. And then we'll start building off that. You hear the birds going crazy in the background. All right, so unfortunately I don't have the uh, luxury of a big workshop. As you've seen, it's quite small. So with that plastic table, um, again, it's temporary, so I don't take up all this space. But often when I need a better flat surface, I'll just put a flat sheet of chipboard on top, so it gives me something relatively flat. As you can see though, it's not the best. <laughs> but uh, it just at least gives me a bigger working surface. All right, so let's now work out the size of these rails. You're probably wondering what these tins of paint are here for, which you'll see in a second. But in this plumbing bench, I'm putting in these plastic parts. So there's gonna be two of them. So one might be for good soil, one might be for bad soil, one might be just for washing up, and one might be for bad soil, one might be for tools, whatever you want to use. Okay, now to work out the distance of, these rails, um, the actual, these are tapered. So what I need to do is for these rails, we're actually gonna lift them off the ground. Take these out. Pop them on there. Now I'll drop these 
gas in. So we want these to fit perfectly. Now, if you think these tubs are not gonna last, I'd buy a few spares, because later on, if you need to um, replace them, you might struggle to find something that exactly fits. All right, so that fits quite nicely. Let's get some thread. Now with the recycled timber, make sure you start with one shape end before you go and uh, chop everything up. Yep. yep, so that's looking good. And we shall need an end piece. So while we've got this, let's test. So this rail is going to go in here. And we're going to position it go there. And then that is going to slide to there. So that bench will slide out. And And this is a problem with dealing with all sorts of odd pieces of timber. So for instance, these aren't as thick as these, which is no big deal. So I'll show you. So first we're going to do is mostly mark the center of this, which we've done. Then we're going to line these up. Screw, nail, whatever you want. I just so happen to have a nail gun, so. Now if you've got a square, just make sure that the ends are square. And they line up for the centers. Yep. Right now, just because of the tapering, what we're going to do now. Make sure everything lines up. Nicely. Now what we're going to do is just basically mark the position on both sides. Alright, lift her out. Again, make sure the surfaces are flat. Done. Now before we go too far, let's check it out. Beautiful. Alright, so these we don't need now. Pop them underneath. Alright. So let's just double check the kit in. Yep, it's all square. Alright, so let's cut two side pieces. Alright, so subframe's all done. That's nice and simple. No need to sand any of this. <laughs> it's all underneath. Alright, we'll set the other side now. So now what we're going to work on is legs. So what we'll do is we'll spend a little bit of time and just get these all cleaned up. And again, there's various different thicknesses and sizes. So we'll try and get them all uh, a bit more symmetrical cleaned up a little bit and then we'll get the legs attached um, and then the base before we attempt the top. All right, it's been cleaned up. All right, so we've got them all lined up. So what we'll do is one of the edges is relatively good. So I've kept that all on the one side. We're gonna trim a bit off one side and then do the reverse and trim the other side. First run through. Now it creates quite a bit of mess, so it's best to um, just 
when you stop for us you get all the plank come on here and you'll stop up all right so what we're going to do now is bring in two mil just to trim off that two mil off the edge all right so now that's all done now what i'm going to do again i'm a bit spoiled i've got a thicknesser so i'm actually going to run this through the thicknesser because they've got a couple of different sizes um, otherwise i mean you can just sand it um, and that'll be fine or if you just like that rough look leave it at that all right we've got them all now we've got a whole range of different thicknesses now i'm not i'm not trying to get all of them the same thickness i wouldn't waste too much time but um, i just want basically a, a relatively nice finish on them so what we'll do is we'll pick the thickest one We'll get the distance on that. So it's about 14 mil. Now I've just got a ray over thickness. So now on the side here you've got the five. Now with this, it's not the most accurate, so we'll start just above that. And um, yeah, so we'll give it a go. Now I've recently just sharpened the blades in this myself. Um, there's a YouTube video I've done on that um, if you want to check it out. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. I'll get the earmuffs it is really really loud <laughs> now i'll stress with this it makes a lot of noise so yes it's important but it makes a lot of mess a lot of dust so i've actually got a shock back so i've connected that up there's an exhaust pull on the back now you've got to be careful because it can get blocked so i'll show you how it goes <laughs> My shop back basically i've got this plugged into the shop back so whenever this gets switched on the shop back is switched on uh, i'll have the back set that time all right so let's get started So that's all done <laughs> makes a hell of a mess but uh gives it a nice finish so i'll just give that a light sand for sander but otherwise everything looks great i'm really happy with that i've only bothered to do one side not both um right and yeah I'm compressor um, I did a review on it if you want to check that I was a bit staving initially but I've been using it quite a bit around the workshop and uh, it's actually really good it's just handy because it's so small um, so yeah. all right so while we've got this out what I'm going to do is I'll put these aside and I'll actually clean up all the other boards so it's uh, it's all done and ready Whew. Whew. We'll cook them through the wall. <laughs> oh my god. Look at all this. Yeah, you can always buy it brand new, but uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. Didn't hurt anyone. Oh, and this has been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> these things don't have great suction uh, with the vac so I ended up just taking the, the vac off um, and yeah just after every couple of boards put the compressor blew it all out and I think it's probably important to do that the rest of the clogs up you get wood, wood underneath it all right well that's enough of that um, <laughs> let's get back to making this thing we'll clean up all right guys so what we've done now is we've made uh, a bottom shelf that's why I didn't bore you with the build, but exactly the same format as this is obviously we don't need to make the provision for the plastic tub, so it just has to be exactly the same size. And you'll see um, I was short on some long pieces, so what I've done is just basically put a piece and then joined it with that. Doesn't look the best, but you're not going to see it. And then all the shitty bits of the rounded edges of all this timber is all going to be underneath and on the inside, so you're not going to see it either. 
Okay. So we'll just make sure it's square. If you don't want to have one of these, I'd suggest you invest in one. I've been using it for at least, I think, 12 years now. Okay. That's good. That's good. So obviously everything was cut the right length. All right, so what we'll do now is the pieces that I've allocated to this shelf, let's get them out. That was these pieces here. This will be interesting to see how bowed they are. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do now is we'll work out, so some of these end pieces are a bit shitty because they've got cracks in them. So basically we'll just mark where we're gonna do the first cut. All right, so we're gonna clean these ends up, then bring it back and remark it. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is work out the spacing. Now these builder's pencils, every time they're on special I just grab a few of them. These are great for spacing. So you can slide them in as spaces or you can put them in that way. Okay, so um, let's try that. There we go. All right, so I think we'll go with that. Now, I wanted gaps in here. Um, I didn't want to make it full because it's going to be a potting bench. Um, I wanted all the dirt and stuff to be able to fall in there. And when you give the quick clean, so let's go with that. All right, so I've got the bread done now. All right, so now we're gonna put the legs on. Make sure the nails are popping up. Beautiful. Let's give it a Always good to finish off just the top of the edge. All right, so let's use the bottom of this as the line for this. That makes things very easy. So first up, let's change the braids. I'm not using the long ones, let's use the short braids. All right. So they're all cut to size perfectly. All right, so let's pair these up. Looks good. All right, now we're just gonna use the brads and glue. Now these I will actually screw, but let's just tack them in place for now. All right. All right. So that's on. Now it's getting a bit dark, but what we might do is we shall pop the top on. All right, there we go. So she's all tacked in place. We'll screw everything off properly. We'll probably even pop the wheels on. But she's looking good. And then let's check this. Yep, right. And we're in business. I think that's looking really good. All right, till tomorrow. All right, guys, new day. All right, so where do we leave off? 
So we just basically tack the tops in with the braids. So what we're going to do is screw them in place and then also give these a bit of a sand. Okay. So just finish off all the sides so they're quite nicely. So what we'll do is we'll pop the first screw in. Okay. Now, before we do the second screw, because this is a little bit flimsy, we'll put a square in. So everything should be square to this base. Pop this in. Pull that into place. So the better mill out. All right, so we'll do that on this side, this side, all corners. All right, guys. So now putting in all those screws is absolutely solid as a rock. All right. All right, so what we're going to do now is put some wheels underneath. And then I think we can actually get off this bit. So look. Alright, as you can see it doesn't look very pretty under here, but it doesn't have to. Alright, so these wheels. So they're gonna go here. So we'll use the corner of this. And it just so happens that works out perfectly for this corner because I've got this extra piece. But what I'll have to do is put an extra block in all the other corners, um, and then we should be able, we should be right. And we'll screw these in place. All right, beautiful. All right, set and repeat. All done. So. That the locks on this side, so you gotta put them both on the same side. All right, so let's get all this stuff out of the way. This could be a challenge, because it's got wheels on it now. Yeah. Alright, so there you go. Beautiful. It's getting quite tall now. I was a bit worried before. I thought these were quite short. But that's quite nice for the top on top. Alright, I think this bench has outdone its purpose. So let's now move it to the ground and start working on this top piece. Alright guys, so I need a flat surface to work off so I'll put a bit of melon mine down. Very important you've got a flat surface. All right. First level and square, which is good. All right, next step, guys, is to put these rails on. Now, what's very important is that when you buy these rails, make sure these rails are bigger, either a fraction bigger if you can, than the tubs. Very important, okay? Now, these we're gonna fix to the sides here. Now, you see that? So we just need to put a, a bit of decorative trim on the front here. So we'll do that first, and then we'll um, put the rails on. So now, they're all good. So we're not gonna go with dead center. We're gonna go 10 mil in from dead center. Now what we'll do for the other side, just to make sure it's level, we'll measure the distance from there to there, and there to there, and set and repeat. All right, now one of the things to keep in mind with these tracks is the screws that came in only penetrate through this little fascia piece, which won't be good enough. So what we'll do is we'll pop a couple of extra long ones, which will go through here and through here. All right, so what we need to do now is make sure that these tracks are parallel. Um, and again, because you're dealing with recycled timber, there's a chance it could be out. So we'll pop that across here. 
Mouth. Trick down here. Yep. Same. All right, this one actually dips in a bit. Um, uh, let's see what happens. Let's have a look. So if you can see, there's a slight variation between the thickness of this and this. So we'll have to pack this out a little bit. Ah, and this track is actually scraping on that too. As you can see, the resistance. So let's pack this out. So if we look at this one, that misses it and moves freely. That's what we need to do. All right, so we just went to the drop saw and just made a couple of small packers, exactly the same size I need. All right, we'll throw them in. All right, there we go. Moving freely again now. So I don't know if you can see it, we've got the little packer in there. All right, guys. So what we'll need is a few clamps. So what we're going to do is, let's clamp our end piece on. This is going to be like used as a bit of a stopper. Okay, done. All right. Now, we've cut a few lengths for the sides of our top. So what we'll do now is, we shall get a pencil. So now that is going to stop on there. And then the base of this, we're going to actually line it up with the base of that track. Okay. So, and that's in place. We'll use this little bit of a block, line them up with the centre mark, so the centre mark here, done, we'll cut that and see if it matches the other side. Alright, that's good, duplicate it on the other side, yep, that's great, alright. Alright guys, so this next step involves a few processes and a few clamps. But what I've done is I've just put a stopper here. Then I've clamped this rail, which has been cut to size. And then the posing rail on the other side has been cut to size. So it all matches up. So therefore it's square. And then now what we're going to do is we'll pop the end piece on. And we'll mark that out and cut that up. So this one, put the notch in the bottom. So we'll line that up with the top there and the top there. Okay. And then we'll just mark that. Cut that, we're done. Alright, let's clamp this on. Okay, so let's clamp this on. Line it up, and let's write the nail off. All right, guys, here we go. I'll show you how I got to this point. So it took a while to figure it out. Okay, so what we're going to do is all these pieces are just sitting on the subframe. So what you're going to do is clamp the end piece first, clamp the second piece, measure the distance from here to here, and make sure that they match. If they don't match, then um, chop it out a little bit until it's all square. Once those pieces are square, I've put all three cross pieces on this side, three on this side. I've found the center. I'm using these pencils as a spacer in the middle. Okay. And then I've got the edge pieces which are basically cut to size to meet in the middle. Okay. So one for here, one for here, one for here, one for here. So this piece is exactly the same size as this. And this piece is exactly the same size as this. Okay. And if it's all square, it will be. Okay. So now I've also cut these little spaces. So these aren't going to be nailed in, in any way. 
they're just there to keep these nicely spaced for us. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to nail in these pieces into the cross braces. Just with the bread gun. And also these cross pieces are basically the distance between the outside of this um, metal bracket to this one. And that's how I got those ones there. All right. So let's hope it all works now. Okay, so let's do the other side. So that's all nailed, both sides. So we can now take the clamp off. Take the clamp off. And you take the spaces out. Now, technically, we can lift these pieces off, okay? But we don't want to just yet. Okay, so we've got the space still in there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure the top. Now, I'm not too worried about this bowling being out in the weather. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue the top. Alright, that's all done. Alright guys, now find the straightest the board you've got to start with. Alright, remember there was a good edge and a bad edge. <laughs> These have all been cut to size. Now I haven't cut them in the middle. I'll be doing that later. So what we're going to do is secure this down. That edge is plumb. Okay. Just line up to this one. Plumb edge. Make sure that this is all lined up. Now the cross pieces. Now this one, we shouldn't nail this one because it's going to go into the timber underneath. So what we'll do is we'll nail this one from the side. Now we'll just keep working our way. Now we're actually going to put a gap in the top. All right. Let's check this in piece. Make sure that this stays is still square. Spacer. Now that last piece can come off now. That was only there just to stop it splitting. All right, now. 
where the pencil was, there's a gap in the middle now. So let's line this up. Right now, where, where the gap is in the middle, just make sure it all lines up, which it does. Check it. Load lines up. Done. All right, so there you go, guys. All done. One of the things I forgot to tell you about was that this end, I'd actually packed it out off the leg, the distance of this saw blade. So there you go. You got a nice tight finish. All right, almost done, people. All right, next step now is to actually fix this to the truck. So let's hope it comes off. Here you go. All looks good. Now, some of the actual nails um, popped out. So I just took the grinders one, just cut them off. Off that side, all good. And again, that'll be all quite sturdy. All right, now let's work out the next step. All right, guys, next step now is to install the draw runners on the tabletop. So if we see the distance between here and here is about three mil. So we need to make sure that when we put this bracket onto here, that it is inset about three mil. And then that'll mean that they close nicely. All right, let's go. Now all tracks have different ways of doing this. So this has actually got a little lever. You lift up, that comes off. Okay. Now that. Now this track is then 10 mil down from the bottom on both sides. All right, so just made a little 10 mil spacer. Again, three mil from the front. All right, let's just go with those three for now. All right, that was easy. Let's see how we go. How's that? All right, let's do the other side. I'm so wrapped that worked. I have my doubts. All right, fingers crossed. Let's hope this one works. Beautiful. 
all right, so she's finished, almost. Now, we're gonna need to do some sort of minor adjustment. These just aren't quite meeting up properly. So we'll work on that and get that perfect. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna pimp it out a little bit more. Again, I reckon that's brilliant. And again, I've just signed this for the wife as a potting bench, but I think it'll have uh, multiple other uses. Hmm. Let me think. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now, everything's all finished. Everything's all nicely sanded. Now, uh, again, it's pallet wood. It's not meant to be perfect. <laughs> There's holes, I'm not gonna fill them. There's imperfections in the timber. There's nail holes. Um, I don't care about all that. That's all character for me. So, but it's got a nice smooth finish to the touch. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do this with actually some um, boiled linseed oil. And we're gonna mix it, do a 50-50 mix of that with some mineral terps. Just got a bit of cotton cloth. All right, guys, it's late the night before. Um, everything's done, but um, I had an idea from one of the guys on Facebook to put a little tool rack on the side here. So I went and bought her, the wife, some tools. So I'm going to make a little uh, tool, rack, tool rack for the side. Um, yeah, should be pretty quick to slap up. All right, guys, so we've measured the opening. Um, we've just got these two pieces of pine. We can lift over from another job. So let's work out. We'll line these two pieces so at right angles. Out the spacing. So line at the bottom, up in the middle, and on the angle. Beautiful. Nothing's baked through. All right, that'll look good. Go. How's that? So I'll just um, even out the spacing. That's great. All right, guys. So we've got a whole heap of trowels and tools. There's four of them. I reckon two and two. I think that'll be good. So there you go, all done. They come on and off nice and easy. Okay. Now the only other thing, I've got this, just this little knee pad for it. So what I'll do is I'll actually pop that on the other side of the board, just on the inside. All right guys, so we've just made this little bracket. Nice and simple for the inside underneath. Pop two screw holes in that and it's just nice and easy to come off and on. All right guys, so she's all finished. Uh, I've got to say, this is one of my favorite projects. Um, it was great to be able to make something for the wife. She loves her planting. Um, does a lot of the stuff around the house, the front yard, the backyard, the side yard. Um, really happy to make this again out of all sort of recycled pallet wood, which was fantastic. Again, except for those two pieces. Um, and obviously the, the draw slides um, and the wheels. That were sort of the only things that we had to purchase. Finished it off with the, the boiled linseed oil and the terps, and then a bit of um, beeswax. You can see it's pretty easily mobile. The only thing I would do though in future is probably put uh, bigger wheels on it that would make it easier to get around. The fact that you can slide the top across is fantastic. You can put dirt in here, you can put bad dirt in there and so forth when you're repotting. 
You can close things up, um, makes it really, really easy and versatile. The tubs come out too, um, so um, it's really easy. You can dispose of your bad dirt and whatnot. Um, and again, really looking forward to using it uh, around the house and, and seeing how it all goes. Um, I think ultimately, again, it's extremely versatile as a potting bench. This bottom section here, again, we'll see how it works. I've got those buckets there just for little bits and pieces. She's got the watering can out there. You've got the sort of the tools on the side. You can see it quite easily sort of moves around. So yeah, and I can see potentially, I think it could be used for parties as well. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a good potting bench, but basically, I think you can just open it up and basically pop ice in there. God knows what, drinks, cans, who knows. But um, yeah, it's something, uh, again, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. There's quite a bit of effort that's been put into it. Uh, again, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you know anyone else that might be interested in something like this, um, again, please share it around. Um, and again, if you like the channel, um, subscribe. But uh, yeah, you'll see many, many more videos like this in the future. Thanks, guys.